Okay, I think Ross is adjusting the volume. Well, I would like to welcome you to our uh, town hall. We have town halls every quarter, and we um, would like to um, talk today about the uh, resident engagement and satisfaction survey that many of you completed back in October of last year. And so we have the results and we will be sharing that with you today. Uh, first of all, I want to um, welcome George Bryan, who all of you know very well, our Southeast uh, Regional Vice President. We're really happy he's here and thank you, George, for leading our community um, during the transition. Um, it's, I know he had a lot of fun um, here and I've been filled in on many projects and, and priorities for the community. So it was really nice um, to have that, um, that information shared and we're so happy you're here today. Thank you. Now I would um, like to invite Barnabas up. He's going to start our uh, meeting in our typical style. Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Hope your day is going well. Let's open up in prayer this morning. Let us pray. Our heavenly gracious Father, I thank you for these wonderful, beautiful residents of Edgewater. I pray today a special prayer during our meeting today as we go through this resident climate survey that we discuss your business and how we could work together to make um, the residents here um, happy and have this to be a very joyful environment. So God, I just pray that you be at the center of all things discussed today, that we do everything and discuss everything with love, in love, knowing that we're working together for a better end. I pray for those that can't be here today, those that's dealing with different situations, whether it be health or financial or any other thing, um, that you just be with them in this moment and give them the peace that surpasses all understanding that guards their heart and mind in you. So Lord, be here today and help us to continue to glorify you and be the center of all things and the center of all things as water in your name. Amen. Thank you guys for being here this morning. Okay, and with that, George is going to actually start our presentation, and then I'm going to share our specific um, results related to Edgewater. So please welcome George. Thank you, Susan. Um, can you hear me okay out there? I'm going to keep my voice up so I don't have to wear that lavalier, whatever, the earpiece thing. So, but it's my pleasure to be here. It's even more pleasurable to be here in my normal capacity as your vice president for the Southeast region. And, and it was nice um, to be able to welcome Susan back home um, to Edgewater um, to, to resume her leadership here. So, but today we're going to actually talk about um, the survey that was conducted um, last year. Um, there were, many of you did participate in the survey. Um, the, the agenda will be, and actually there's a, we're going to start actually with the methodology, the second line item there, and talk about the survey itself. Um, and then the national s statistics. I'm going to share some information that's really interesting, and it shouldn't be surprising um, when I bring it to light to how it can affect each of our individual satisfaction period, um, employees and residents alike. And then Susan's going to drill down into the actual performance or the survey results of the independent living residents of Edgewater at Boca Point. And then both Willowbrook Court and Oakbridge Terrace will touch on some specific areas um, there. And then an action plan. What's most important is that we take what we learn, what information we have, and we use it to make steps um, to make improvements. Of course, with the number of areas that we cover, we're selective and we look for those opportunities for the greatest improvement and also synergy between those areas that are related. Now the survey itself, the survey was conducted by the Axe Center for Applied Research. What is that? That is an internal Axe um, group. It's Bill Tamulonis um, is a managing director and some of you may recall that name because you also have participated in, in different informational type opportunities that the research um, uh, center applies to. Now, this is a turn from the past. The last survey we actually held was in 2018. Um, typically, we have surveys of residents every other year. Um, 2020, we did not hold a survey because we were knee deep in the pandemic. We had a lot of other business on our plates, and there was added expense to actually conducting a survey. 
Now, the surveys historically had been, had been conducted through Holleran. Um, the Holleran organization is well known for the surveys, but if you look under the hood um, for the surveys themselves or the, the Holleran in participation, the size of ACTS and ACTS participation was one of the main drivers to their overall results. In other words, when we did comparisons to ACTS compared to Holleran, we were Holleran. ACTS is so large, it really drove a lot of the results. There's also added expense, you know, working on the 2023 budget and also closing out 2022, um, which was a very challenging year from a recruitment perspective and just overtime and the challenges that we shared in the fourth quarter town hall, in fact, um, were major players and, and having us decide to go in-house with the survey. Now, the survey was conducted um, through an in-house entity of ACTS, um, but the, the results went through a legal firm um, that was the, the recipient of the details. So you know, when you participated, you'd recognize that those were sent to a third party, compiled and then delivered back to ACTS. So major cost saving helped save costs both in 2022 um, and as well as this year. Now the survey, there were different options of participating. To reduce cost and increase efficiency, we've really gone to trying to do as much online as possible. Um, there was a link available to be able to participate, but if, if that wasn't feasible, we did, by request, make the paper copies available um, to residents as well. Um, Edgewater had a partition, participation rate of um, about 59%, uh, if I'm not mistaken, which is above the ACTS um, average, but still, what we'd really like to see is a 70% or better for those results to really represent, um, statistically significantly represent the community. Um, but we had just under 60%, which is um, by percentages stronger than some communities, um, but still not to that 70 that we prefer. The survey had 31 questions for independent living residents and then 16 questions for both Oak Bridge Terrace and Willowbrook Court. Those questions were modified to fit that setting as well. And, and those two healthcare settings, um, the significant other or the family of the resident or power of attorney also um, often was the, the respondent. So it does change some of the dynamics on the perspectives of lifestyle that it's from a third party. So, you know, we look closely at those results, though, and those are also shared in those areas. So Willowbrook Court residents and Oak Bridge Ter Terrace residents would be privy to the details. Now, the statistics I'm, I want to share. Um, consumers have really been hit with a lot of negative developments over the past several years. Obviously, the pandemic, um, labor shortages that we talked about that really hit us hard and hit the industry, hit the world hard last year. Um, and supply shortages and, of course, inflation. Um, combined with that, just the news you know, that we hear every day, the international challenges that we hear, the struggles on the globe, just the general conditions for personal satisfaction have declined. Um, there's been a very sharp decline um, from 2000, from the last, from 2018 until now, the last time we were surveyed, um, the general satisfaction of, of uh, uh, American citizens, period, um, has declined. Next, um, how that relays or, or conveys into customer satisfaction um, is apparent as well. Um, the American um, Customer Satisfaction Index, ACSI, which was um, an indicator developed by the University of Michigan in, in um, 1994, um, measures those areas. And they, they cover a number of different markets and industries and, and consumer demographics. So age demographics, um, for example, regional demographics, um, but those have also seen a, a, a decline. You can see here since the 2010, actually, this starts at 18, but since 2010, there's been a decline in those factors. The general satisfaction um, of 5% since 2018, but fluctuations that started around 2010. Um, these, these do impact us all. And I, I have a good example. I did some research and looking at some of their um, results, and I looked at restaurant areas. and. And there's one that I saw as a, a um, it's a fast food restaurant, but it seemed to be known for its high quality and customer service, Chick-fil-A. Has anyone not heard of Chick-fil-A? Um, it's, they're, they're growing, you know, they're, they started in Georgia and they're known for their customer service and their approach and, 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 and maintaining satisfaction. 
Now, for the last eight years, it shouldn't be a surprise, they've maintained the top of their demographics. So they're at the top of their, that group of restaurants. Um, but their 5% decline still that aligns with the customer satisfaction index over the last two years. So while they're increasing and they're staying at the top of their game and, and their industry, there's also a, a general decline in satisfaction. Um, I peeled that onion back some more and just looked at drivers of satisfaction. And it's interesting, you know, it's, you gotta be careful with the internet. The more you look, the more you'll find, and the more directions you can splinter off. But information overload. You know, most, there was a time, I actually remember the very first smartphone I, I'd ever seen was a resident who brought to show me their smartphone. It was an, uh, the first iPhone um, at Indian River Estates. Now it's very common for just about everyone to have a smartphone you know, in our pockets. In fact, I hope mine is muted and it doesn't ring during my presentation. Um, but it's, that information is at your fingertips. You, know, you, you and I, all of us, most of us, know that we can find just about anything out at a moment's notice by looking at our phone and searching for news. But that information also drives your internal satisfaction and your expectations. Um, expectations, for example, are increased by service delivery. An example, Amazon. You know, who has ordered something from Amazon and you get it delivered the next day? Who's ordered something from Amazon and you get it the same day? That's, you know, who would, thunk, who would have thunk it, right? Well, that also increases your expectation. You get to the level where when you order something and they say you'll, it'll arrive in two weeks, you're saying, what, are you kidding me? You know, and you check Amazon to see if they have it. So technology is a driver of expectations that can also impact satisfaction um, and, and your personal satisfaction. Now we're gonna shift this to senior care. And J.D. Power actually has a resident satisfaction index for large um, senior living providers such as Axe. And you can see, um, this is actually since 2020, a, a decline of, um, 3.5% um, um, with resident satisfaction for, for reasons that you're very familiar with. Um, an example is delaying um, building projects um, because of focus in other areas. You know, Axe is a large organization and was impacted by the, uh, by the pandemic in a major way, but there are many standalone communities that were not only impacted, but suffered dearly um, by the same pandemic. Um, just because not having the breadth of opportunities, you know, to make changes and, and the, the um, dynamics of a large organization. So that plays into also um, satisfaction, just knowing that there were delays, knowing that there are items that were on your personal wish list or want list or desire list for the community um, that may have been delayed. So all these play into the, the survey. Now, I'm going to turn the podium over to Susan, who's going to go into some detail, but I want to share in advance that those 31 questions, you know, they're, they're, it's a lot of ways you can present the information. Um, and I gathered the executive directors in the region to talk about how we would present this today, and we elected to, to follow the template that you're going to see, and you're going to see a lot of numbers. Don't get lost in the numbers. It's simply a reflection. The center is going to show you acts overall um, for this past survey and the right side will show the um, Edgewater performance from 18 and 22, and the left side, do I have it wrong? Yeah, the left side's gonna show the regional comparison. And the reason, it's a, it's a bit of a dashboard, and Susan's gonna walk you through it, and she's highlighted some slides to help guide the conversation, but please don't get lost in the numbers. I know there's a lot of information that's gonna be presented, um, graphs and, and, and pies, we don't think it would have done much different. It still requires the dialogue. But this is the beginning of a process of being able to dissect and discuss the information. So I'm going to now turn this over to Susan, who will drill into the results from the survey um, and tie in some of her thoughts for the future. Susan? Thank you. Okay, thank you, George. Okay, so we'll start with overall satisfaction. And um, as George mentioned, on the right-hand side are Edgewater's results, both 2018 and 2022. So as you can see, some of the numbers have slightly 
either declined, stayed the same, or actually improved. Now, what I've done on these slides is anything that declined um, significantly or a little, little larger than a slight dip, I've um, showcased or highlighted in yellow, so that's like a caution. And anything that um, improved um, slightly or si actually significantly slightly, we kept the same. But anything that improved, um, I highlighted in green. So that'll just give you an indicator of the things that we're gonna focus on throughout the year. And Susan, if I may interrupt. So my spiel was about the differences between the two. I talked about that 5% slump overall. So if it's, I think we're applying that as well. If you look at the Southeast region overall from 18 to 22, and then the ACTS overall, as an organization, we felt a slide um, in, that, in that overall satisfaction. So that's really the intent of sharing that side is to show, to balance you know, where you are as a community against you know, where the region was, where the company is overall. Those are the 26 communities combined. But I didn't tie in. That 5% equates to about a 0.25 um, if you do the math. So it's a, it's a quarter percent slide and just general satisfaction from those other indexes that I shared. Okay, thank you. So we'll start with overall, and you can see that we slightly um, declined from 18. We went from 4.1 to 3.8. The southeast region for this um, last year was 4.02. So we're, we're similar to the southeast region, just slightly below it. A fulfillment mission, um, we, we also declined just slightly. So we stayed about the same at a 3.8. Now, would you recommend an ACTS community? Um, we did decline there. And so that's something we want to explore, the reasons why um, those of you who did um, complete the survey, why that, that figure declined. Because we believe that um, ACTS is still the best um, opportunity for our seniors to enjoy a lifestyle and a, a pretty affordable um, Ray and to also have life care benefits. So we believe that we are still a great um, option out there and um, we hope that you believe that as well. So we're going to be focusing on that um, so that we can see that that number um, improves and try to understand the number too. Okay, uh, the next um, item is supports and encourages a welcoming environment to all. We stayed about the same at 4.0. Provides appropriate resources to help adapt to life and health changes. Uh, that did slightly go down um, to 3.7. That's similar to the southeast region at 3.93. The next question offers resources to help maintain or improve overall health and well-being. Again, we, we stayed about the same compared to 2018, and we're slightly below the southeast average. Okay, responsible fiscal management. Uh, this number is in yellow, and we, we see a decline here. Um, last year was difficult, and I think the economy probably impacted um, the results here. Um, we were all questioning how we were going to, um, what we were going to buy at the store. The supermarket prices went up, gas prices went up, everything was going up. And then we were speaking um, with residents about the fact that likely there would be an, an increase for monthly fees that might be higher than um, we see and we saw in typical years. And so that may have impacted the results. Um, but I, I believe that, you know, ACTS has been very um, responsible in looking at expenses and finding ways to reduce expenses. We have a, a very um, strategic um, a plan this year to um, ensure that we watch expenses because we know that you pay for all the expenses. So we want to be good stewards of your monthly service fees. So we hope that that, um, that response, um, responsible financial management number would 
um, improve the next time we conduct the survey. The next item is response to inquiries or complaints, and that number went down. So we want to um, make sure that we are responding to your complaints or inquiries, that we're partnering with you. There are priorities here on campus, and we'll work with your resident board leadership to prioritize what's important to this campus, and we hope through that 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 number would also improve. A friendly and courteous staff, uh, that number slightly improved by um, or to 4.5, and that was similar to the southeast region. Confidence of staff um, stayed about the same from last time. And keeping in residents informed uh, stayed about the same. Okay, campus life continues. Um, number of volunteer opportunities. That is a new um, survey question, and we hope that um, we will um, be able to provide a lot of volunteer opportunities. We all want purpose in our life, and through volunteerism, many of us find purpose. And so we, we would like to um, see that number improve, although we never surveyed you on that number before. So we this is our first number. It'll be our benchmark, and then we look forward to seeing that number improve. Responsiveness. Um, or preparedness for unusual situations stayed about the same at 4.1. Safety and security of apartments, buildings, and grounds um, greatly in improved since 18. And I'd like to uh, pick Ross's brain on that one just to see what we did differently in between those years because obviously uh, there was um, in, an increase in confidence in that area. Effectiveness of fitness uh, programs remained the same from 2018. Okay, quality of spiritual life uh, remained the same since 18. Quality of transportation services um, dipped slightly from 18, we're at 4.0. And the variety or availability of activities or events um, just slightly declined by 0.1, and I believe that number is going to go up. We, you know, during the COVID years, we reduced a lot of programs and events, and I know Alan, who's sitting in the back, um, she's very enthusiastic to um, add additional programs, events, and lifestyle choices uh, to the mix, so we're really pleased she's in that position. Okay, now we go to culinary, and um, culinary, we have some yellows. The first one is menu selection. The second one is availability of healthy choices and also quality of food. And we'll talk specifically about those areas and what we plan to do to improve those scores. Temperature of food was also in yellow, and we'll, we'll speak on that in a few minutes. Service and dining room um, slightly improved to 3.5, and quality of takeout um, was um, slightly improved from 2018 to 3.7. And those numbers are similar to the southeast region. Okay, building and grounds. Upkeep and repair of the buildings um, slightly declined just by 0.2. So these are not significant declines or improvements, but so that tells us that um, those numbers remain about the same. When you compare it to Axe or to, Saint, to the southwest, southeast region, uh, we're slightly above the average there. Appearance of exterior grounds uh, remained about the same since 18. Cleanliness of common areas uh, did improve from 18, and we're really pleased that Marianne is here and leading our housekeeping and environmental service efforts, um, and those numbers are strong. Responsiveness to maintenance requests are um, at 3.9, which is similar to 18, and is slightly above the southeast regional results. 
Okay, confidence in emergency medical response, that did decline. And I believe that part of that is uh, explaining what you can expect with the emergency response um, programs and services that we offer. And we'll be working on that so that um, everyone understands what the services are and hopefully those numbers um, will improve. Quality of nurse practitioner was not surveyed in 18, uh, but we had a very strong score of 4.4. Quality of rehab services also not surveyed last time, and we had a strong score of 4.5. So now we want to switch gears and go to Oak Bridge Terrace. Uh, we had 21 residents or family members participate. That's about a 77% um, participation rate. The overall satisfaction remained the same from 18. Assurance of benevolent care also remained about the same, slightly improved by 0.1 and fulfillment of mission uh, remained the same since 2018. To con continue on with Oak Bridge Terrace, supports and encourages a welcoming environment. Uh, that improved to 4.4, so um, we're really pleased to see that everyone who moves to Oak Bridge Terrace, we want everyone that moves there to feel welcome and inviting, invited to their new home and those numbers are encouraging. The next item is provides appropriate resources to help adapt to life health changes, and that stayed about the same. Enables me to be socially active as much as I like. That number slightly in, improved to 4.3. So related to health services, the quality of the nurse practitioner um, was not surveyed last time, but we had a very strong score of 4.0. Quality of rehab services outstanding at 4.8. And quality of home health services was also great at 4.0. So related to staff services in Oak Bridge Terrace, the skill level of our staff slightly improved, according to the survey, to 4.2 compared to um, 2018 at 3.9. Responsiveness to personal needs also improved um, to 4.4 since 2018. Respect for privacy did decline, and so we want to understand what that really means, so we'll be delving into that. And then quality of spiritual services um, improved over 2018. So culinary, um, these numbers basically stayed the same and they're related to menu selections, quality of food, and temperature of food. So they remained about the same. Slightly increased, but remains similar. So we'll move to Willowbrook Court. We had 30 responses or 55% participation. Our overall um, satisfaction did decline from 2018 to 2022, but it's still a good number at 4.1. Assurance of benevolent care did also decline to 3.9. Uh, fulfillment of mission was 4.1. And this is out of five, so five is the, the max. Okay, quality of the nurse practitioner uh, was a 3.9. Uh, it was not surveyed in 2018, that question. Quality of rehab was a 4.2, and the home health services was at 4.2. Skill level of our care staff um, remained about the same since 2018. Responsiveness of personal um, needs declined slightly. Respect for privacy, that's another area similar to Oak Bridge Terrace that we want to delve into that we'll be working on. And then quality of spiritual services remained about the same uh, since 2018. 
So with culinary, our menu selections um, were the, is the area that um, we believe we need to work on. Quality of food and temperature of food did slightly dip as well. So here's our action plan, and this is related to the areas that were highlighted in yellow. Uh, the first one is responsible fiscal management. And we want to make sure that we communicate effectively to the residents on what, as we, what, what we are doing collectively as an organization, as well as here on our campus, to really um, mind the store and, and make sure that we're being um, prudent with the monthly service fees and the, the um, income that we receive that we're spending it appropriately. And so we'll be communicating with you, um, to you, about that and having dialogue. So um, we, we believe that it's, um, you know, in our best interest, your best interest to be financially prudent, and we hope to communicate that to you and to um, instill the confidence that you deserve. Response to inquiries or complaints, um, we are going to work on being timely in any responses to you personally or collectively. We will um, enhance our customer service training efforts. Um, we have, um, right now, our organization, ACTS, is, um, has a hospitality training initiative and we'll be working with our, res our employees on hospitality on all levels. And we will start that with the employee town halls. We conduct town hall meetings monthly on every shift. So all employees will receive the training. Um, but we want to make sure that employees understand if there's a complaint, how do we handle that, what is the best way to, um, to bring resolution to any complaint. And then we also want to improve communication. We believe that in communication, while the answer might be no, effective communication at least brings us um, to an understanding. And usually people accept the word no if there's a good explanation behind it. So we're going to work on effective communication. Under culinary, um, we had a few areas there that we are going to look at. We will be working closely with the culinary committee as well as the resident board. Um, we want to review comment cards or incorporate comment cards daily. We will review our menu with dietitian to add additional healthy options as that was something that was uh, indicated in the survey. Um, server training is a key element. I think Dawn does a great job um, but we want to help the servers when there's um, a dissatisfied resident at a table. Maybe the meal is cold or, or it wasn't cooked as ordered. How do we, um, how do we recover um, from that and how do we, we help um, the resident be satisfied at that particular moment? So we're going to work with the servers with dissatisfaction or customer um, service needs. And then we're also going to look at our recipes. We have a, a large database of recipes that we draw from. And the reason why we use recipes, obviously, is to have consistent um, menus and consistent quality. And so if there's a menu or a recipe that we're using that perhaps a lasagna you just don't care for, there's other lasagnas in our database. So we. We draw from our recipe database, and if, if the menu, if the recipe we use is not to your liking, we have others to choose from. So we'll, we'll continue to use the recipes that we have available. Okay, medical response, um, that's probably related to, in an emergency, how are we responding to you and to to your needs. And so we want to um, educate residents on the services we provide, including medical emergency services. Um, we also are going to uh, receive or ask for feedback when someone has a medical emergency. How did that go? What was your experience? And then learn from that. So those are two areas 
will look at. We also have IT programs that allow us to look at emergency responses. We have security reports that we review. So if someone goes out to the hospital, we know someone has gone out. How did that work? How, how did we respond to your need? And so we hope to um, improve the confidence with medical responses. So we'll continue to have dialogue with that. Related to um, OBT, Oak Bridge Terrace and Willowbrook Court, respect for privacy was one of the yellow highlighted areas. Uh, we're going to work um, with our staff, making sure they understand resident rights and dignity and really showing examples and, and teaching and explaining to our staff how it might feel to be a resident, to put ourselves in the resident's shoes so that we can do a better job of respecting privacy. We're also going to work with the resident council members, both in Oak Bridge Terrace and Willowbrook Court. And Melissa, our administrator is here, and I know um, that's a very important uh, um, practice for Melissa or um, it's just always important for an administrator to make sure residents' privacies are protected and she'll do her level best to, to make sure that that happens. Okay, Willowbrook Core overall satisfaction. Again, um, we want to see an improvement in, in those scores. We're going to um, make sure that we look at discharge residents, people who, who either go home to their apartments here or some residents who live outside of our community um, will have satisfaction surveys, will look at those surveys. Um, we have resident council um, involvement and we'll partner with the residents who live in Willowbrook Court and um, receive feedback from them. We also will um, continue to strengthen our family relations. Um, so that's very important to us because we're not only serving the resident who lives in Willowbrook Court, but we're serving the spouse or family member who comes to visit or is here to make sure mom or dad or aunt, uncle or spouse are well taken care of. So we're going to um, really try to strengthen those family relations. And then leadership stability. We've had some changes in leadership in Willowbrook Court, and when that happens, um, you know, certain things are missed, and I don't mean missed as in services, I just mean that with Melissa here, for example, she's going to make sure that we have staff training, ongoing training, that if there's an issue, we're going to do huddles with the team, and we're going to talk about whatever that issue is. So as we stabilize our leadership, which we are in the process of doing so for Willowbrook Court, um, that those things are only going to be strengthened. And so we're so pleased that Melissa is here. We're currently um, in the process of hiring an, a director of nursing for Willowbrook Court. And so Melissa and I have um, conducted some of the interviews. And then we have a regional nurse who will also conduct interviews with us. So we're in the process of stabilizing that position as well. We have a great ADON, Susan, I'm sure many of you know her, and she's doing a, a great job supporting Melissa. Willowbrook Court menu selections, um, we will involve the residents who live there with the selections. We also have the resident council will involve and we'll partner with them. We'll ask the dietitian to review our menus, um, and we, per, we will ask for daily feedback. How was your meal? Was the meal hot? How was, the, how was your protein? How was the vegetables? And then we're going to increase special celebrations. Um, you know, when you eat in the same restaurant every day, everything can become very, you know, the same. And so we try to spice it up with celebrations. We do that here in independent living. And Oak, Oak Bridge Terrace and Willowbrook Court are no different. So we'll, we're going to make sure we increase uh, those special celebrations. So at this time, um, we'd like to open uh, up the conversation uh, to you. And if you have any questions related to this topic, we'd love to, um, to discuss those with you or suggestions.
Just raise your hand if you have any questions. I'll bring the mic over to you. We have a question here. I'll, I'll start. <laughs> um, the, the one item that uh, that uh, uh, I looked at uh, initially when, when it was presented had to do with the response to fiscal management and inquiries and complaints. Uh, it, this is my experience, and that's, that's probably how I responded to the of the survey. There were some items at the end of last year that were very, I don't want to call them hurtful, but as far as the residents here were concerned, was way out of the ordinary. And we objected to it, asked for response, and never got the response. And uh, I think the main item had to do with housekeeping, but I think there were a few other items. Even right now, there's an issue about the, the costs for uh, outsiders, uh, why, they're, why they're printed, why they're even there, and some of the amounts. A banana at 250 makes absolutely no sense. Uh, in, in any case, we're not getting feedback. We didn't get it locally, and many of us tried to contact uh, Axe man Management and did not get the response. And I think that's an area that you need to look at. Okay, and I'm, go I'm going to ask that um, we always start locally. And I know during that transition, a lot of you know personal letters went up to the corporate office. I'm here, I represent Axe, I represent you, and I'm here to field um, concerns and complaints, problems. Um, and I'm here to help solve them. Now, the solution may not always be what you think the solution might be, but I hope to explain why to you, and hopefully then we'll be on the same page. But we, we start here, we work within the organization, that's why you have an executive director. I work with George very well, so if there's issues, I'm gonna be tossing them at George. If I if there's an issue that I've never come across um, in my career, which there's you know very few of those, but there are issues that might come up, I'm going to reach out to George and say, has any other community experienced X, Y, Z? And George is going to give me his, um, you know, his view on it. And so we are your representatives. And so I ask that all of you please work with me directly here on campus um, because that's how I work. I work directly with you. And if I can add, Mr. Rappaport, in all due respect, you've had dialogue directly with Jonathan Grant who met with you personally and had multiple email exchanges. You might not have heard what you wanted to hear, but you were highly responded to. So I really take you know, offense to your comment actually because of the level of dialogue that you've personally had. You might not have gotten the answer you wanted or the detail that we're willing to share, but you have been responded to and will continue to respond to you. Now, the, what we didn't talk about in detail was the menu. The, the cost, and I, I, I'm not the best person for this dialogue, but I wanna share with you. The cost changes for the menu um, and the pricing on the menu affect different communities differently. If you had villas, for example, and residents who live in villas that are remote on the property, one option they have is to opt out of the meal program altogether and pay for meals um, a la carte or on a per meal basis. Um, they are highly impacted for it because they have to then weigh, does it make sense for me to opt out or should I opt in? So we're having meetings at those communities that are very individual for residents to find out where they lie on that scale and the pricing on the menus is, is really helpful on, in those communities because they can see you know, what, the, what it's gonna cost them to have dinner, for example. Um, I'm, we talked about this this morning as well. You know, 250 for bananas is ridiculous. I hope that's not what we're charging for bananas. Well, that's just ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know what we paid for it either, you know, but 250 for banana is just bananas, you know. Um, and, but there, we have some growing pains here, but the reality is there is food cost. And when, when you're participating in a plan, the, the meal plan, 
a lot of the cost of operating the restaurant, which I don't like that term personally, but, but it applies in a lot of ways to the dialogue, but a lot of the costs that are embedded in your monthly maintenance fee, you know, including the infrastructure and the upkeep you know, from what's under the hood in the kitchen, if you will. Um, so we plan based on the, the participation with those. So those communities that have outside participation coming in, that's not balanced in, especially if you have, like Indian River has 70 villa residents, 70, that did not participate in the meal plan. So costing out the cost of service to those 70 individuals is, is impactful to the community. So it does, when you look at 26 communities, there is an impact to it. In my opinion, and I shared this with with Susan, while I might not agree with some of the pricing, and I think there's some are certainly open for debate, you know, bananas, for example, I think, you know, personally, there's some value in really recognizing the cost, you know, of, of what, what it costs to dine, you know, does it, but it's something that you can work with as a community here. There may, may be in the future, for example, some might have guests who you would like to see, you know, I mean, a, a son or a daughter or someone who says, Mom, I don't want you to pay for my meal. Um, others would rather have a guest that you would not want them to see, a menu with the pricing on it. You have the option, and you will be working with that going forward. And I, I believe, Darren, um, it will arrange if you have an outside guest or um, guest staying here on campus uh, visiting that we will give them a menu without pricing if that's what you let us know you prefer. Okay, other questions? Myra. I think that the survey last year was the wrong time for the survey. We have Susan back. She will do a fabulous job. And at the end of the summer, maybe we should do the survey again. And it will definitely be improved. Thank you, Myra. And You're welcome. No pressure there, right? No, no, no. I don't get any payback. You bring a good point, though, Myra. What I am aware of is that there will be pulse surveys. So you'll get um, little brief surveys. It might have just several questions on it um, so that we can measure, and this will be later in the year, um, but so we can measure progress in the areas that we're focused on. But we did miss 2020, and I, and I, I can't agree with you more that there was a, I don't know in the last three years if there was a really good time for a survey, but I think you're right, we're well positioned. The next full survey will be in 2024, Three, right? Uh, probably 24, four. 24, yeah. sorry. But we will do, we'll do pulse surveys in, in areas that we're focusing on so that we can measure success in the meantime. And that information will actually, we, the turnaround time is much faster. So usually a pulse survey within several weeks, we're able to say, you're surveyed, here's, where, here's how we are now. Here's a refresher on the dashboard. Okay, I'm not seeing any other hands. We'd like to um, thank you for coming today. And next week, we will have our Ask the Director meeting. I hope you will attend. Um, I have a lot of um, interesting things to share with you and um, some topics, and then we'll open up the meeting for open dialogue at the end of the meeting. So please join me next week for Ask the Director. Again, thank you for being here with us today, and have a great day. Thank you.